We are talking today about the value of humility. I think so. Is that so? And uh, we had a man here in the first uh, service. We studied together in 1987, when most of you were just a dream in the heart of the Father. <laughs> but uh, Johan van der Ham, yeah, we come a very, very long road, passionate for God and with major testimony about what happened in Malawi, what God did in him, through him, and with him. And yeah, if you want to hear the testimony, it's Afrikaans, but uh, translation can be easily uh, be available. So if you want to hear more about that, just speak to some other leader, one of the leaders, and they can talk to you about that. Okay. Hallelujah. But it was just amazing for me once to hear, you know, his spiritual father was Duom. Duom was my spiritual father also. And how he testified how Duom had this word in his heart about Africa and, uh, and a lot of things of Africa and about even agriculture. But he knew nothing about it, but it was just in his heart. And here this man went and he just put so much of that on the ground. Something is making a sound here. I don't know what it is. Hallelujah. But, yeah, and in the same way with Duham that had it in his heart about a big piece of ground in the north of Bluefontein, and God just did it. I'm just once encouraged to say, Mom, Dad, Grandpa, Grandma, you are a leader. You have kids in a school. You pray for those kids. You pray for those kids. Those prayers are not in vain. Those prayers are not in vain. You speak for the word of God. You speak for what God is saying to you. Even though you see nothing of it, your children and grandchildren will just be shocked at how suddenly certain breakthroughs just appear because of previous generations that were willing to lay down, willing to be faithful even if they don't see any breakthrough. That made Abram a father of the faith. Hello? That he even saw beyond Canaan. He didn't see just the Canaan. He, he looked beyond that. He saw so by faith in the future that he was looking for a city whose architect and builder is the Lord God himself. He was looking for the new Jerusalem. Oh, come on. Abraham, nobody spoke to him about the new Jerusalem. But looking in Hebrews 11. He didn't see Canaan and where's Jericho and where's this place and where's Ai and the, and, and the places that his grandchildren, every tribe will inherit. He saw nothing of that. He looked thousands of years beyond that. He could see something. But that, if you can be that man, if you can be that woman walking before God faithfully, that what you see what you believe, that faith will have an impact for the next generation, impact for the next generation, impact for your children, for your grandchildren, impact for the people that you teach, people that look up to you, the people that you are, that are following you in your example, even at the workplace. Are you with me? <coughs> May that be true of your life, that you will see. There will be a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest through your life as a seed. Everybody say, my life as a seed. 30, 30, 60, 100% harvest for the kingdom. And that harvest for the kingdom, we want to define what is harvest. And if it doesn't fit in our way of thinking, sometimes we feel discouraged. But you just go by faith. You just start... To say, I believe what God said. And if God said it, that if my life is a seed and Christ in me is the incorruptible seed and I give my life, even though through even mistakes I make, perfection is in my spirit and I give my life as a seed. Even outwardly, sometimes there's lots of mistakes. Give your life as a seed and for the kingdom there will be 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. So it will be. Start to believe the truth. Amen. Tell your neighbor, start to believe the truth. 
Maar je moet zeggen het met attitude. Oké. Okay. James 4. Are we there? James 4, I believe. But he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all other others fully. That is why. That is why. Because he gives us more grace and more grace. That is why. He says, God sets himself against the proud and haughty, but gives grace continually to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. Those who are humble enough to receive it. There's such a lot that God wants to give unto you. But do you have the capacity to receive it? And capacity is not, do you have the perfection? Capacity has to do with, are you humble enough? Are you humble enough? Humility, we spoke, spoke about this a few times. Humility is a beauty in the Trinity. Everybody say, beauty in the Trinity. The first facet would be in the next verse. Therefore, submit. If that is verse 7. You have it there. So be subject to God. So be subject to God. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him and he will flee from you. Subject to God. So submit. Be submissive. Submit yourself to God. What are we talking about? Submission is some ingredient of humility. You can write that down. Submission is an ingredient of humility. Without submission as an ingredient of humility, we call it like Satan, every demon of lust, every demon of rejection that must submit, that must submit. Hello? Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But some will submit to that and, and, and realize this is it, but still going to burn in hell forever. But some, from a place of humility, where that is a beauty, from a place of beauty in God, towards God in a beautiful relationship, that submission is an ingredient, that submission, that's, that type of submit is godly, is, is beautiful. So when I need to submit to Viepia, in a, a clap, club, you know, because, yeah, I cannot say, uh, there's no mistake that that guy can make. But uh, let's say if he was making mistakes, and uh, I need to submit to him, you know, it's, it's not so easy. But if I can do it because I love him, because God said submit to authority, and I have the privilege to submit to somebody physically in doing what? In showing my submission to God because he created in me a humility, a humility that is beautiful. God creates in you a humility that is beautiful. A humility that is beautiful. When you humble yourself, he will lift you up. So it's a clickety-click, and then you are up there. No, rubbish. <laughs> That's not a credit card in and cash out. That humble yourself, and he will lift you up. Where You know where it starts. When you humble yourself, he will touch you, because he needs to touch you to lift you up. He needs to come close to you to lift you up. And the first thing is not the thing of, he lifted you up. The greatest blessing is that God coming near to you, doing an awesome work in you, touching you in a gentle way, holding you in his love, in his passion for you, God being involved with you. And in that involvement where God says, I'm coming, I, I'm my focus is on you. When you humble yourself, my focus is on you. I'm here to enable you. I'm here. I'm involved with you. I want to touch you. I want to take you. I want to put you in a certain place. But that process, that process, you know, from humble yourself to you are lifted up. That process is one major, major, major privilege. That the God of this universe will be so involved with you. 
that he wants you your life and take your life and let it blossom that people will say whoa what happened uh, what happened and he stands back and he wants the people to say that was God are you with me so when you humble yourself my brother my sister you're gonna humble yourself but we will call it if there's a submission but because you are forced into that you call that humiliation that's a shame but you will submit you will submit to your flesh you will submit to your irritation you'll submit to your circumstance you will submit to something or you will submit to god all these others are actually in humiliation as a shame because you don't have to submit to all those stuff god has something better for you god is so much better for you so submission is in the context of relationship from a heart that is humble and that humility there's no shame in the trinity when jesus submits to the father he submits to the father he has all this time in prayer all this time in prayer all this time in prayer and everything the father says he says there's not one word that jesus would say what he does not hear the father say that's according to the word i will say nothing except i hear my father saying it that is submission i will not do anything unless the father does it that is submission but there's submission from hell there's submission that demons must do when you come in the name of christ in the name of jesus christ the enemy need to obey that's where the disciples they were so excited when they were sent out two by two they come back and say wow jesus evil the evil spirits they just submit and just obeyed and, and jesus said don't be excited about that be excited about your name that is written in the book of life what is he saying humility when there's success even in how you see how the enemy obeys humility must protect you the beauty of humility must protect you because even in the trinity the success is called jesus christ the champion of the of the universe is called jesus christ but he said i do nothing unless he does i say nothing unless i hear he's saying that when you've seen me you've seen the father because there's nothing that i did on my own there's nothing that i did because i can because he can he can do a trillion things perfect there's a trillion things beyond a trillion things that jesus could do in a perfect way but that's why not why you go tomorrow and do something because you can do it great and you can do it perfect you go and do it because you believe god says you must do it and you do it with him and you do it for him you do it with him in the name of jesus you do it for him for jesus name's sake as a worshiper amen so let's grow up grow up by becoming dependent by becoming dependent the guy doing his own thing like we said now a few times the guy doing his own thing that's the guy that's immature and that immaturity goes to childishness that you are childish he's kinderachtig when i think i'm old enough to make my own decisions that's what the enemy will tell you and he's just doing this you're old enough to make your own decisions yes that's why god has the faith with an expectation that you will not make your own decision that your decision will be i will do whatever the father says unless you tell me jesus was immature but if you don't say jesus was immature you will call maturity i will do nothing unless the father tells me oh man we are on the way still there I'm far from getting into that breakthrough but god's going to give me that breakthrough today tomorrow i speak it for you speak it forth amen we need to get into that place we need to get into that place some of you, you i know you know that sometimes you said something and you realized this was now the right sentence at the right time at the right moment and i didn't even think of saying it now who experienced that in their lives eh you remember now come on build with that build with that because that's from god because that's from god amen you better look at yourself in the mirror 
And remember, it's not a horror movie. You look in the mirror and you know God in an excellent dream. That's you. And speak the truth into your life. Wash. Jesus washes his bride with the word of God. For you to be washed, your soul, your heart, your emotions, is the word of God. So you need to be able to look yourself in the eye, there in the mirror, and speak forth the word of God into your life. Maybe you must do it once or twice and see. It, it, it works. Because it's the word with the Holy Spirit washing your soul. People said a lot of rubbish to you. People mocked you. People had bad things that they said about your life and things that happened. You got hurt. You got disappointed. You don't want to trust people. Maybe that was your life up till now. But now you're going to speak forth the words. You, you honored those words that hurt you so much. You honored the words that disappointed you, that broke you down, that, that brought these things in your life. What about we choose today, we're going to honor this word above that word. That word's had a lot of impact because we are human beings. We get hurt. We got hurt. But what about today? God, there will be no word as this that will have such an amazing impact in my life. That when I read your word, it will touch my heart. You will not feel it always in your emotions. Your emotions will tell you if you don't feel it, if there's not something come out of it, it doesn't really mean something. Oh, that's an excellent deception. But if you put, if emotions is going like this, and emotions manifest, I'm too tired to read the Bible now, or I'm irritated to do this or that or that. Let the emotions, just put him there in the room and let him throw a tantrum in the room, but keep him there in the room. Don't go and interact with that tantrum, tantrums in that emotion room of your life. But you are a spirit. You're not an emotion. That's a frikazoi baboon. But you're a human being. That means you have a spirit. You are a spirit. And your spirit hungers for the word. But you won't always feel the impact on your spirit when you read the word. But when you read the word... Your spirit is reborn. You read the word. You ask Holy Spirit to open it up. Every time you read the word, you are growing in maturity. Because the word says you will grow from glory to glory. That means from beautiful life to more beautiful life. Life with meaning to more life with meaning. When you open the word, there will be more meaning and more meaning or more quality, more substance coming into your life. If you decide to read the word, even though your emotions feel <sighs> by faith, you're reading, you take it in. Wise virgin, wise builder, and on the day when it's necessary, it will just be there. Just suddenly that word will come. You will just know what's the right decision. Because you put the mind of Christ, you opened up the mind of Christ to your soul when you read the word. Amen. What are we talking about? At the end of the day, you submit to the word. But you submit to the word in a relationship. At the end of the day, the, the word says, Jesus says, I'm not going to judge. My father's not going to judge. But the word will judge you. So one day, there will be submission. We're talking about humility and the ingredient of submission in humility as beautiful. But there's submission so that you can go to hell. And that word is this word that will judge. This word that will judge. But allow this word, like we always say, to judge your flesh now, today. That today you deal with that word and you force your body, you force that haha stuff is in your head, wherever. You force it into submission through the word of God. Bring judgment from the word of God on your flesh. Are you still here? Are you still here? And so understand, if... I focus here. Thank you. If you... If you are walking with things that are rubbish, that are not from God, you know, you will be irritated when you read the word. I told the guys, I told them in this week... Some of the students, 
It's amazing how some guys that can write exams in maths or in drama or in dance and all this, this, or in art or in, in uh, welding and what. But when they start to study word, then suddenly they cannot do the exam. Then suddenly their mind is all over the place. Why? It just confirms the impact of the word. The enemy knows this is, this is dangerous. And as long as this dangerous word is not in your heart, he can feel safe with you. That spirit of rejection can feel safe with you. That spirit of lust, that spirit of compromise, that spirit of negativity, that spirit of criticism, that spirit of, of fear or intimidation, that spirit of anxiety. It's okay as long as you don't get into the word. And you will be able to keep a focus while studying this major exam, even for university. And you will be able to do all these other stuff, but just start to open the word. And you are drowsy, you are tired, you are this, you are that. You have no focus, you're thinking about all the other stuff, you have all these worries, you have whatever you never thought of at all while studying science. Suddenly, there's 20 other things as priorities coming up in your mind when you open up the word of God. Only me who realized that, or maybe one or two else. You know, that's the time then you must, that you not, must get worried, but that's the time you realize, I better get into the word. Because there's too many other voices that suddenly jumped up. Pshh! Voices that see the word of God as an enemy. Voices that see the word of God as an enemy. And how did they come so close to me that I can hear that voice of, no, you are tired, you will get into the word later. No, 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 this. No, 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 that. This word doesn't mean anything. That. Why did all those voices get so close to me? The, when I opened up the voice of God, the written voice of God, when I opened it up, all these other voices just was there, like we said in the previous sermon, were just there at my table. They had the right to speak to me because I invited them to my table. I invited that spirit of rejection, that spirit of negativity, by thinking it more, by, by keeping it more, by, by articulating it more, by accepting more what that voice said. That, you know, I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm going to make it because when I look at this and this and this and this and then, and there's just a subtle fear about provision for the future. How can I get married and have kids and this and this? Where's the future? What, how are things going to work out? Hello? But who gave that demon a voice at my table? Me, because I, have, I accepted his voice. And the more you accepted the voice, there's the more of the presence of where the voice came from. The more you accept the voice, the more you will find the presence where the voice came from. And that's the presence of God in your life. The more you stand by faith on the word, if it makes sense or not, the more you, your flesh says, shut up and submit. The more you submit to the word, submit to the word, the more you will see the presence of the one who uttered these words. Are you with me? So do submission from a place of humility as a beauty, as a beautiful foundation in your life because you're a worshiper of God in spirit and truth. Worshiper of God in spirit where your soul submits to your spirit. Holy Spirit testifying your spirit, Romans 8. Hello? Your spirit becomes strong. You grow from glory to glory, strength to strength. You become mature in your spirit, your spirit that is perfect. Everything became new in your spirit. Are oh, you still with me? <laughs> from that place where no baboon can worship because yeah it doesn't have a spirit but as a human being with a breath that he breathed in you so that you have a spirit with that spirit in you you worship him i will worship god with my spirit in spirit and in truth beyond the facts truth i believe the truth even if it doesn't make sense it will set me free I believe the truth because truth is the definition of the one that I call my master, 
Jesus Christ. He's called the truth. And when I submit to the truth, I actually submit to Jesus Christ. Because he is the truth. And sometimes, on purpose, God will let you submit to the word that sometimes you don't even understand. Because he's jealous for your love, that you will do it. Not, you not submit because you understand. You don't submit because you agree. You don't submit because everything makes sense. You submit because you love him. And his word is truth. Finish. And Jesus says, enter the kingdom as a child. Yes. My brother, my sister, you enter the kingdom as a child. Amen. By having that attitude. And more and more, the church end times. Guys, you're going to see the church. Well, God's going to give some ridiculous. I don't want to say mark my words, but I, I tell you prophetically. You're going to see more and more radical, ridiculous strategies. That's going to come into churches. That are going to shake that church that, is, that came from an absolute traditional mindset. And suddenly they prayed with desperation unto God. They know nothing about the gifts. They know nothing about the absolute in the spirit. They know nothing about a lot of things. But they just called out to God. And God just came. And in a quickening anointing, what you had to learn in 30 years, they said one week and they know that truth, what you've taken 20 years to get into your life Beyond the fleshly, this and wara, wara, waras. And just suddenly that church in Gaza, that church in Cairo, that church is just there with God. And the miracles is just opening up. The miracle of salvation, the miracle of his presence. Not first the miracle of the healing. When I just became a Christian and I got into the charismatic People call it sometimes the charismaniac, but with charismatic movement type of happy clappy. You know, then, uh, yeah, you do sometimes interesting things. This one prayer that God never answered. I put my faith out for that healing, and then he never did it. You know what that was? I said, God, it must grow back. <laughs> so, so. Okay, you can laugh. I was sincere, man. And I said, God, I want testing of your faith, you know? Okay, God never gave me, because maybe I must have Mr. Stompy for discipleship reasons. But uh, bottom line, why did I waste your time with that one now? I don't know. I don't know. But hallelujah, you are with me. Beauty of humility in the Trinity. Did I say that in this service? Father... Father said, in humility, my son's name is the name above all names. Not, Father is the name above all names. No, Father says, the name of my son is the name above all names. That's humility. That's a beauty in the Father towards his son. That is putting his son there. Are you with me? The beauty of humility in the son is, I say nothing unless Father says it. I do nothing unless Father does it. Oh, man, are you not your person, your own person? You know? Why must you just say what Daddy says? What? I'm talking about the human being now. You know? If you grow up. Why must you just say what Daddy says? Why must you just do what Daddy is saying you must do? You know, you mustn't do it in a, in a way of immaturity. But with God, the Son, He chose because of the beauty of humility in His heart. I will let everybody know. What I say is what Father is saying. What I do is what Father is doing. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Beauty of humility. Holy Spirit doesn't speak from himself. But because of the beauty of humility, the word says, he will only speak the words of Jesus. He will only remind you of the words of Jesus. And he will only explain Jesus' words to you. Beauty of humility in the Trinity. There's a submission that is a shame that is on its way to hell. There's a submission where rubbish can be in my life and I must be submitted because it's bringing destruction. It's not from God. It's a shame. And that's where you have a warfare in the name of Jesus. 
But always, God, for your name's sake, I submit. But in your name, the rubbish and the flesh must submit. I, you got that, hey? For your name's sake, I submit in humility as a worship, worship expression because I love you. But in your name, the enemy and hell and my flesh and the rubbish must submit. Because he's going to destroy your life if you don't deal with that. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. Amen. Are we still here? God opposes the proud. What does it say? He's against them. Opposes, I want to say, actively working against. Those who want to write it down. To oppose is to actively work against it. Actively, God is working against pride. He's not opposing, he's not just he's ignoring it. He's working against it. So when I come and I want to do this for the Lord, but I'm the center because pride is the, is the intense focus on myself. Pride manifests in superiority and inferiority. If I feel, no, you know, if, uh, let's turn it around. If Ruan feels he cannot run as fast as me, Therefore, he's not good. That's a pride thing, man. That's rubbish. He's good in his own person, you know, even though he cannot run as fast as me. Are you with me? It's say, you mag smile. Say, sissy. Okay. Are you with me? Are you with me? Please, man. Inferiority that you compare yourself with others and you're not good as this one, not as good as this one. That's pride. God is working and his spirit is uh, working actively against how you are positioning yourself. When you compare yourself with, uh, let's say, now maybe I under, we sit in long show, Jaden. If you uh, uh, comparing yourself with, with one another, that is pride. And God will work against you actively because he's word. He will not be, he will not be nasty, but his word works against pride. It's like when you have an antibody, you have a body and an antibody, whatever. The one is fighting the other one. It's not just the one is choosing to fight the other one. Light is not choosing to fight darkness. When you, when you put on the light, darkness, there was a fight against the two and immediately half second, it's gone. Psh, darkness is gone. Are you with me? So when I focus on myself immediately, the word, the word does not choose to work against me. I choose that the word must work against me by focusing in pride, by focusing on, I'm not as good as that guy. That guy is much cleverer than me. That guy is more muscleish than me. That guy is more this. That guy, you know, that guy know how to tune his father or, or his, his pastor. You know, I wish I was like him to have the guts for that. Not one of you guys, but, and all that rubbish is me saying, I put myself so that the word of God can work against me. It's not the choice of the word of God. It's your choice that the word will work against you. God opposes, opposes the proud. But he shows favor. He shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves into God, resist the devil. Now, my brother, my sister, when you submit yourself to God, don't resist the devil and deal with the fear, the anxiety, the fear that you'll be rejected, that people are going to uh, talk behind your back. What if three people are nasty with you tomorrow? Oh, what's going to happen to your life? Huh. Well, a lot of bad stuff is going to happen only if you are not submitted to God. Because in submission is the protection. Protection. You go for... Uh, for operation, and they're going to take the, the kidney out of your bladder, and, uh, and, and, the, and the specialist, what are, you, what are you doing? You are submitting and trusting and believing that what he's going to do will be according to how it must be. So you even go for the narcotics. The spiritual narcotics, many times, is the supernatural peace of God. It doesn't make sense. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have peace. That's some spiritual narcotics. Are you with me? 
Not the ones that you, nie, nie, nie die drugs goed nie, wat noem jy die goed? Nar, ook narcotics, wat noem jy dit? Daar jyne, ok. What am I saying? What am I saying, guys? Well, you have the guts to trust in such a way that even if you must go into with narcotics into for the operation. And that one is, I have peace. I don't understand why. It's not logical. One plus one is not two, but I must go for two. And I just have peace in my spirit. I just know you call that submission. You call that submission because you love him, because you believe in him. Now, I submit to the word that says perfect love, perfect love for me. You've loved me so much that you gave. I received that love. Now I take the command to love myself with the love that you have given me so that with, in the way that I love myself, I can love my brother and my sister. And then, then, after you submit it to the truth, after you submit it to God, then resist the devil. Now, who must resist the devil? The love in you. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. But the problem is, I don't take the word. I don't submit to the word. I, I have an issue with that. I have an issue with that. I don't allow God's word to heal me, bring healing in my heart for what happened in the past. He sent out his word and he healed them. Healed you from the past. Has healed you from the things that went wrong. I don't allow that. So I'm very quickly irritated, frustrated with people when they do not do the right thing, especially towards me. Are you with me? And the devil is playing uh, soccer with my life because he can kick me wherever he wants to. He can set up, manipulate circumstances just like this. And I'm flat. But if I submit to God, means I submit to who he is, Receive, he says, I must receive his love, I submit to that. I take his love, I submit to that. I love him back with his love, I submit to that. I love myself, commanded by God. They say, God commanded me to love myself. I better do that, otherwise I'm sinning. Do you hear? It's a sin not to love yourself with God's love. Because he commanded in the greatest Commandment. Love the Lord your God, your neighbor, as you love yourself. So you are a sinner and you, and you feel sorry for yourself. And it's okay to have that sin because God understands my heart why I don't love myself. Why I don't settle the issues with myself. Settle the issues with yourself. Through the light of his word so that you will submit your life to God. And when your life is submitted to God, you, will have, you won't believe it how less issues you could have maybe with people. And how easier it could get to love other people. You know, sometimes some old people, older people, my daughter said, I'm not old. Next year I will be old, she told me. We walk from the spa, I said to her, slower. She said, not slower, you are 59. Next year I will walk slower because then you're old. Then I'm 60. Okay. Good. And the mond van gelukkig zijn je cijfelen nu niet. Good. What am I saying? Ja man, je let me know. Je van spoor afgebring. The old people. Older people. Some, they say, grow better or bitter. You know that one. You're going to go, either become better or bitter. There's no in between. There's no in between. But you're going to become more bitter as a product of the past or better because you understand who God is in your future. Okay. But so some older people, it's like certain things, they say, why did I do that? That is, was not so important. Why did I have an issue with my brother about that? Why did I have an issue with my wife about that? Why? It, it was not worth it. And then more older they begin, uh, be becoming and more mature, they realize... It wasn't worth it to be so angry about it. It wasn't worth it to make such a fuss out of that thing. Are you with me? And this simplicity of, I could have 
done that in just submitting to God in what he's saying, and that, that, that would have been so much better. But the ones that are submitting to that, that issue, that thing going to grow in them. When you submit to bitterness, when you submit to unforgiveness, I'm just getting more irritated, you know, uh, with uh, Asia. I love him very much, more than many others, because he's caring for my and his cats in, in the house. But bottom line, let's make as if I didn't really love him so much. And, you know, tomorrow when he does something, this amount of wrong, that amount of wrong is going to have this impact in my life. The guy next to him, Jesse, he, he does this amount of wrong, it's not going to affect me at all. Because oh, I just love that man. You know, he's so nice. So, and there's no impact. But when you start to have an issue, oh, something, hell will focus on that issue and make sure that you will just see more and more mistakes so that you will look with a certain glass. The enemy, that demon will put some glasses, some sunglasses on so that you don't see the sun of righteousness, but that you will see some other, other stuffies. And I've seen how people, even in the ministry, I've seen people with, yeah, when they start to have this certain heart, suddenly, within a month, they have this list of 20 things that are wrong, that is a major thing for them. But in the past 15 years, that was not such a problem. But when they opened that door for bitterness, and submitted to that spirit. That spirit was not stupid. Unfortunately, the devil is not stupid. My brother, my sister. Unfortunately, we are the guys that are stupid to submit to the one that is very, very, very clever in his strategies from hell. But we have the one that overcame everything. If we submit to him, Jesus Christ, we have the breakthrough. Amen. So you submit to the word of love, and love will deal with fear. You submit to what God says in his peace, and God will deal with anxiety. So submit, and you can resist the anxiety. It will flee, because you have submitted to peace. And the prince of peace will deal with the anxiety. But there's no resisting the devil if there's no submission that comes from a place of humility because you love him, because actually you have a beautiful relationship with God. I mean, the beautiful relationship with God will be the key to deal with hell. Otherwise, you have a fight with hell. You have a fight with demons. You have a fight with all the rubbish, and, and you are drowning in, the, in that. Drowning in this fight with anxiety and negativity and depression and, 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 and stress and all these other stuff. But you are so battle weary. Not one of you, us. But then that person is so battle weary with all this stuff. Why? Because you try to resist the devil without first in a beautiful lifestyle with God. Submit. Submit to God. And only then resist the devil. Amen. He says, if you are, ooh, come to me all who are weary. And, and that is many times in the fight of life that I get weary. Come to me and learn from me because I am gentle and, oh, gentle and humble in heart. I have that beautiful quality that you need in your life. And that is gentleness and humility. That's why learn from me. So that you don't become weary, battle weary with life. I know uh, everybody's bored because not one of you get battle weary. You know, you got the victory. Amen. Yeah. But let, we have, let us have the victory tomorrow. Amen. Gentle. Gentleness and meekness, the same. Who will inherit the earth? The meek. Blessed are the meek because they will inherit the earth. Why? Why? Because they understand submission. 
as a quality in meekness. Submission as a quality in humility. Because the sachmudacha, the, the meek, the gentle, is the one that's teachable. As long as you stay teachable, my brother, my sister, as long as you stay teachable, and don't start to think that you've arrived. But as long as you stay teachable, you will inherit the destiny that God has for you this week. God has planned excellent things for you this week, next week, for this year, 2024. God has excellent plans for you, excellent destiny, but you will see nothing if the key of being teachable through meekness and gentleness is not becoming a lifestyle, an attitude, a way of living. Because that's ingredient for humility before the Lord. What I do, I do as if unto the Lord because I love Him. And from that place, He will lift me up. That you will not be known as a product of your circumstance, not a product of bitterness, not a product of your hurts, not a product of your past, but a product of the heart of the Father. An excellent dream. I'm living the excellent dream of the Father. Let's say that. I'm going to live the excellent dream that the Father has for me. Okay, that's what the subject has to do with this weekend coming up all about. Thank you, Father, that we can love you. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you have an excellent dream for each one in this place. You've placed excellence in their hearts, Lord, so that they can have excellence in their hands. They can have excellent lifestyles. They can have excellent relationships. They can have excellent dreams. They can have an excellent future because God, teach us, show us how to respect the excellence that you've placed in our spirit. Because you are the definition of excellence, Jesus Christ. Help us to respect your presence. Forgive us for not respecting the presence of excellence in our spirit, called Jesus Christ. God, we choose not to ignore you anymore. We will not honor all the other voices. But God, we choose to honor your voice and submit to you alone. Give each one of us a beautiful heart of humility so that, God, that we will get into your word if our emotion says it means something or not, if our logic says it means something or not, if our body says I'm tired or not. God, we will not submit to what our body will tell us first. We will choose to submit to what you have placed in our spirit and we will have our time with you and your word by your grace, through your blood, in Jesus' name. Because, God, you give us more and more and more grace, ability, opportunity through the cross of Christ, through what you've done for us, Lord. We have hope. We have a future. We can boast because of your grace and your grace alone. I pray that for every man, woman in this place, in Jesus' name, as all say. Amen. Let it be so.